it's Presley at ActoGames.com here and today is Science Sunday and today we're going to be doing basic physics lesson one, forces. So if we're going to be doing a course on basic physics, then we need to start with, well, the basics. So physics is the study of matter and energy and how they interact. And how they interact is through forces, which is what we will be talking about today. So a force might sound a little bit complicated at first, but really it's just pushes and pulls. A push is when the force is away from the object applying the force, and a pull is when the force is towards the object applying the force. Pretty simple, right? Here's a couple of examples. Push. Push. Pull. 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 Push. Well, can we stop this swing? <laughs> so there are lots of different forces and they all have their own names and ways for calculating them, like we've talked about centripetal force and friction, but really all they are are pushes and pulls. One big classification of forces that you need to know is contact forces and non-contact forces, and they are exactly what they sound. So contact forces rely on objects touching each other to apply the force, and non-contact forces don't need to be touching. For example, when I push Cooper's shell razor across the table, that is a contact force because I had to touch it to apply a push force and push it across the table. And for example, when I take this pencil and I hold it up, gravity is going to apply a pull force and pull it towards the ground. And that is a non-contact force because gravity does not have to touch the pencil to pull it down. Magnets can also apply non-contact forces. For example, a magnet could pull a piece of metal towards it or push away another magnet that's facing the same pull as it. So magnets are also a non-contact force. So if an object is changing speeds, speeding up or slowing down, it is doing so because a force is being acted on it. The same thing for directions. If an object is changing directions, that it's doing so because a force is acting on it. The opposite isn't necessarily true, though. You can't tell that no forces are being acted on an object if it's not speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. So for example, if I take this pencil, this pencil is still and is on the table, but that doesn't mean that no forces are acting on it. Gravity is still pushing down, but the table is also pushing up with the same amount of force. So they cancel each other out, and the pencil is still. You can say, however, if an object isn't speeding up, slowing down, or changing directions, that it either has no forces acting on it, or it has balance forces acting on it. And you can say also that if an object is speeding up, slowing down, or changing directions, that that object has unbalanced forces acting on it. The idea of balanced and unbalanced forces is very important to know, because there are rarely ever one force acting on an object. There's Especially here on Earth, there are tons of forces. There's air pressure, gravity, friction, the, t the ground pushing up, which is known as the normal force, and many, 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 many more. So there's rarely ever one force acting on an object. If an object is moving to the right, then that is because the force pushing it to the right is stronger than the force pushing it back to the left. So next time you see an object changing speed or changing direction, look at that object and think about what forces are acting on it, what forces are unbalanced, and what forces are balanced, and what forces are non-contact, and what forces are contact. It's fun to look around at the objects around you and think about those things. So later we'll talk about a more formal way to think about the forces acting on an object, but for now just think about all the pushes and pulls happening around you and to you at all times. So yeah! Thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.